Let's look at a typical process pump running between 900 and 4000 RPM as it passes through the four stages of bearing failure. Starting with the baseline condition for a good bearing, we see a significant amount of overall vibration. However, it is important to note that the peak view value is at zero. This is because a good machine, properly installed and well lubricated, should not be impacting. Therefore, we can state the zero principle. Peak view on a good machine should be at or close to zero. At stage one bearing failure, initially the defect is not even visible to the human eye. There is no change in the overall vibration, but peak view already provides an indication that something is happening. When it climbs to a value of 10, there is a problem on the bearing. At stage two, small pits will begin to appear, and the bearing will have less than 10% of its service life remaining. Typically, there is no indication of the developing fault in the overall vibration, but peak view continues to climb. When it doubles to 20, there's a serious problem with the bearing. At stage 3, the bearing damage is now clearly visible. You may start to see a small increase in overall vibration of plus or minus 10%. Meanwhile, peak view continues to show the progression of fault severity. In the final stage of bearing failure, the overall vibration might rise 20% or more. In comparison, peak view continues to increase sharply, perhaps climbing as high as 40 Gs and signaling that the bearing is approaching end of life. There will be a marked increase in the overall vibration at the point of actual failure, but too late for planning. This is in effect notification that the machine is shutting down. In contrast, peak view has been indicating a developing fault over the past weeks or even months. Immediately prior to failure, peak view levels may surge rapidly to 50 Gs or higher. In summary, we can use two basic concepts when monitoring peak view. The zero principle, peak view on a good machine should be at or close to zero, and the rule of tens.